Hey there guys, Shane here from Figadec 3D Printing, and today we're going to mod the Ender 2 power supply. Welcome back guys. As I said, today we're working on the Ender 2 power supply, and I have to say, I did a whole big video on this already, and it's never going to be seen, because it actually didn't work out the way I wanted it to. I thought I'd found a way to modify the stock power supply enclosure so that you could fit in the Noctua 25 millimeter fan. The Ender 2 has gone through several iterations of its power supply, the very first one being like a laptop brick, the second one being a thicker power supply, and this is the third generation, which is a slimmer one. And I had everything working and it was going great until when I put on the final metal casing on top of the power supply, it pushed the fan down just a little bit too much and the fan would hit against one of the I don't want to say transistor, but one of the pieces of electronic on the board underneath. And that really bummed me out. So I was like, well, I really want this to work because I want this to be a quiet machine as much as I can. I already put stepper dampers on it and I'm changing out some of the fans on it. And everything's going so well. This just set me back. So what I've done here is taken a model on Thingiverse and I think made it better. I've changed out quite a lot. This is my version four. This is the final version five here, printed on two different machines just to speed up the production, the productivity of my, of my shop, I guess. So the answer I came up with was this power supply enclosure. I found this on Thingiverse and I wanted this to do more than what the standard one was. The standard one, all it did was add in a switch, which sadly hasn't come in yet, but that's an easy thing to put in. And it uses an XT60 connector in order to connect the power to the actual printer. So you have an ICE plug that goes in here, a power switch, and then you have the uh, connection to the actual printer, which makes this completely modular power supply. Then I wanted to be able to mount this underneath the printer. So I went ahead and added on these tabs. And I also had to modify the feet that I found on Thingiverse in order to accept where these tabs are. As you can tell, there's only three here because the printer bottom is not square. It slices off on the one side. So this corner actually sticks out a little bit. Uh, some other things I did is I changed up the ventilation. Again, this is version four, this is version five, the final version, pretty sure the final version that I have now. I changed out some of the ventilation the way it was, added some ventilation to it, large in ventilation in it. I added here the four screws for the actual power supply and resized the hole. The hole in the original was too big because it's meant just to slide over the power supply. I wanted this to actually mount and fit the fan. So I went ahead and redesigned that. I also flipped the back part, which I think I did in this one, yeah. So between version four and five, I actually flipped where the switch is because right now the switch is over top of your leads that you're gonna hook up things to the printer if you would need to. I didn't like that. I wanted the switch power to be over the input to the power supply and the XT60 to be over here on the other side. I may add another XT60 or some other type of connector in there or you can modify it yourself if you want to. I'll put up the Fusion 360 file for anyone to see. And if you wanna add in hot you know, lights that just plug right into here, you can do all of that with this power supply case. So a little more what I was trying to do. What I was originally trying to do is modify the power supply so that it could fit in there. I thought I had it, I didn't. So I went with plan B, which was again, just to eliminate this enclosure, the upper half of it. And what I came out with was pretty nifty. So looking inside of there, see if I can zoom into there. You can see again, the metal casing is gone. The fan is just mounted right to the case here itself and then hooks into the printer. It's kind of a weird way to put this in here. You actually need to slide the fan in there, slide this back casing on, and then hold the fan up and then screw it down. Once you get one of these screwed in, you're golden. Or you can set it down, hold onto the fan, it's actual like the actual fan itself, and then put in two screws. Once you have one or two of them in, the other one's going without a problem. I left this open. If you want to leave it open, you can. Otherwise, on Thingiverse, you can find 60 millimeter fan shrouds. There are fan covers that you can just go ahead and put right over that and you cover it up even more if you want. I may or may not do that. Um, let's talk more here on my more final version. So I, again, rearranged the back here. The AC in is over here on the AC side of the power supply. The DC out is on the DC side of the power supply. It just makes wiring a little bit cleaner. Uh, it's not crisscrossing like crazy underneath of there. 
I changed up, sorry it's blue. Oh, it actually shows up on camera pretty good. Uh, I changed up and made these a little bit bigger here on the top to kind of pull air through. I added ventilation here to the side of the back and large ventilation back here. Most of this is blocked. It's just kind of to allow air to get into the chassis, the back end of it. Uh, I did not add anything more to the back except for two mounting holes over here. And this is to secure the case to the power supply once it's on. Otherwise, the power supply just kind of throws around in there because you have to have play up here in the top so that there's room for the cables once you sandwich it all together, sandwich it. Once you sandwich it all together, you need some space for those cables to go and you can't have the power supply be exactly as big as this. So again, I went ahead and changed up and added those so you can actually secure this to it. All the feature on there, secure this underneath your printer. And by securing this underneath, it really makes this a compact printer, almost like the footprint of a Delta printer, which is really small, especially when everything's included inside of it. It makes it a really compact design, which I really, really like, and that's what I really wanted out of this printer. I will say this, the model is super duper tight. I did up the size of the actual model itself from the guy that originated it. It was a little too tight in my opinion. I just made it, an, I gave an extra millimeter all the way around, so an extra two millimeters uh, for uh, you know your either direction, I guess. Uh, there's two millimeter extra space in there, a little bit more airflow, a little more space in there. Putting these together is easier when it's on the power supply, but it is super tight. I think I just need to add a chamfer to the corners just to kind of guide it in better. It is really hard to get together at first. Once it's together once, it's pretty easy. Uh, again, you can mount your 60 millimeter fan in here if you wanted to. Again, you can modify the fusion file, make this a larger fan if you wanted to. I think you probably could fit, if you mount on the top, you could fit a 120 millimeter fan on there. Uh, but this is probably the biggest you're gonna get because there is another piece of electronics in there that is higher. And this 25 millimeter fan just fits in that space. So the 60 millimeter fan just fits in the void that it needs to be in. So yeah, maybe I'll show you guys some clips on going inside and actually dealing with the fan in there. But as I said, the original just was kind of uh, OBE simply because once I got the casing in, I still could not get it uh, to sit right. And what I did was to kind of cheat, which you can't tell here anymore because it actually has come up off of it. Uh, I did put a piece of double-sided tape in here to kind of pull the, the PCB down. And yeah, that just didn't work at all because it, again, yeah, it just didn't work. It was just bad, bad, bad thing to try and do. And it was pretty janky. I don't know why I tried to do it in the first place but that's okay. And again, if I can try to zoom in here, you can see the fan butts up against this inverter. I'm guessing this is one of the power inverters for AC and DC. AC DC. I don't know. I don't know the electronics in here. I just know this big old piece of equipment is in the way of the fan. And there's another, oh, not quite as big one, under, directly underneath the fan, which is why you're limited to the space. But using this case gives you a couple extra millimeters so that you can use a 25 millimeter fan and it works out just fine. And that just clips together. You put your two screws on the side. This one has two holes because I actually drilled this, this version in order to map out where I put my holes in the final version. So yeah, this is gonna be in a pretty quick video. I, I just wanted to show you how you can actually get a 25 millimeter fan inside of your Ender 2 power supply. You can probably do this with any other 3D printer as long as your power supply is the same size. But again, I will include the Fusion file if you want to go ahead and change this to make this fit a larger power supply or a thinner one, anything like that. Please do so, do the remix on Thingiverse. I would love to see people run with this and uh, make it happen. Again, this also really cleans up the printer because you can mount the power supply underneath. I uh, will put links down there for the feet that I am using and then the modified parts to the, to the make it work with having this mounted underneath. That's it guys, so I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you go out there, mod these printers, get them working the way you want them to. I want them to be as quiet as I possibly can make them. And that is why I went ahead and made this mod. So thank you guys for watching. You know what to do, like the video, be a subscriber, that way you get lots of videos and see things and when I do mods like this one. Uh, become a patron if you want, down below, donate me a dollar more, greatly appreciate it. The money from there funds projects just like this. I use a lot of filament, printed this out now six times. So there is probably almost a kilogram of filament out there crying because it is now no longer with us. So yeah, that really helps out. If you wanna help me out without spending your money, affiliate links down below, do your daily shopping with those. I appreciate the help, even if it is just to watch this video. So until next time guys, happy printing.